本节目是由 Bigadilly Cafe 赞助播出，想要打卡拍照美食的朋友们都可以去那里哦。So today we have our honorable guest Buan Nuriza. Yeah, the daughter of Anwar. Hey, hey. Hey, so my first question will be: yeah. Would it be very annoying when people introduce you by the name, the yeah. title of daughter, daughter of someone? Anwar? Would you be offended? Uh, it was cute. <laughs> um, it was cute when I was when I was eighteen. All right. Oh, I'm, I'm no longer eighteen, so. So right now. Yeah, it's yeah, okay. it's okay lah. It's okay, you know, because um, we can't change who our parents are. So oh, I embraced right. it. I'm the daughter of Anwar and Aziza. But in the school, <laughs> people were like, hey, yeah. this one is. Anwar yeah, when you were eighteen. Um, yes, of course. I I was known as that. I was also bullied sometimes. Oh. Um, but then I was a prefect, and after some time, people know who who, who I was, got to know me, and uh, then you discover true friendship. And that's how it worked. Would it affect your childhood? Actually, we went to government school, so it was very normal. Very, sh- we, were, we had a, quite a sheltered life. All right. Because uh, yes, my father was political, very public, but we, you know, we just had a very quiet um, life until '98. Then you had oh, the reformacy. political, economic, financial crisis, and wow, everything changed, and it was a shock. The point Drama. you you join politics as well, right? It was like a, a natural evolution mm. because I started campaigning. You know, you work alongside the opposition parties. You you went to see people in the kampung. It was wonderful because you you find so many Malaysians coming, wanting to hear the the story, the struggle. But it was a, a process. You don't just jump into it. Painful, but still a useful process. Yeah. Let's hold on a little bit because our food is here. Oh. All right, sure. Okay, kesiannya, you belum makan? Ah, uh, belum belum lagi. Kesiannya, yeah, yeah. Karen, <laughs> yeah. do you want to describe what's this? Oh, this is, is a giant squid, uh, salted egg pasta. Wow, so kind of like signature of this. You see, very very Sorry, very huge though. Maybe you can tell people how to get here. Uh, you just wait. <laughs> we will put the address here. You just wait, okay? Don't okay. ask us. And this one is soft. Okay, shell yeah. crab. Okay, uh, you uh, must uh, take the car because I'm trying to reduce my. Oh, oh I see. Right, but right, all right, things right. are carbs. Okay. What kind of drink you want? Uh, just water. water. Just water. water. Right. All right. All right. After Pakatan Harapan first time winning the election, and yeah. then you resign from all the position from PKR. So we don't know like what are the reasons that you do so. It was a, quite yeah. a shock for us, you know. Yeah. And the room is not in the cabinet. I mean, firstly, it was it's important to always be part of um, change. You can, and we did it as a backbencher member of parliament. And um, I think if everyone wants to be part of the cabinet, really nothing really functions effectively. Oh. Yeah. But I think one one of the key things um, I believe which is more important. Some say it was like a an early warning before Sheraton. So I'm a sort of person that uh, when I feel that certain principles are not uh, defended and I see certain things, I felt the best thing to do was to repeat. What kind of uh, principle? There were a lot of power, internal power struggles um, and uh, I felt it was really toxic. Okay. I tried to do my best to warn but I also took the time off because I wanted to uh, go back to the people and mm. I started doing my mm. multi-dimensional poverty index study with Professor Fatima Kari, mm. that took time. I just wanted to be spending some time with the community. Oh. I wanted to learn about the different types of poverty, the challenges, the businesses, the SMEs, the struggles that they face. And I think it was nice to take that time off right. from mainstream politics. And of course, if you don't come back, uh, evil always prospers when good people do nothing. So, yeah. If you if you can do one policy, what is the main policy you want? Before the pandemic, I would say um, education. Education. After also, of course, education because of the lost generation. But what's the main precondition? Safety net. Yeah. When people lose their jobs, people uh, drop out from schools. So that safety net, making sure they are able to survive. So what is the safety net? The polytechnic school or what? There are different ways. Um, if you talk about EPF, mm. they are recommending uh, post-pensioners uh, supported through um, a pension system. Okay. Um, they are also advocating for children. Right. 
because children are the most vulnerable. Yeah. So yeah. You, how do you protect them if their families, for example, are abusing them yeah. or don't have enough money? So will the government take your advice? At the well, uh, keep, keep pushing, sometimes shouting a bit, um, but sometimes also engaging different ways. But that's why, you know, we're here. Whether yeah, to the media or even uh, in parliament, parliament next week. Oh, yeah. yeah. You were telling me, Lucas, when is elections? I don't know. Why, <laughs> why, why you think I know? <laughs> you are the one in parliament. I'm, I'm gonna eat my carrot, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. now is the time to eat. Oh, yeah. Speaking okay. about next election, like, mm. as we yeah. know, uh, on the by election in Malacca mm -hmm. and also in yep. Johor, PKR doesn't really have a very satisfying result, we would say. The opposition as a whole, yeah, it was very disappointing. No, uh, especially PKR. Oh! Here's a carrot. Okay, so I, was, I campaigned, you know, so I, I went down and you could see people were very upset about the defections. People were saying, why is my uh, vote, you know, is it, does it, does yeah, it make any difference? Sure. And, and that kind of helped push the anti-hopping, the passing of the anti-hopping bill. I remember this old Pachi coming to me and said, you know, I, be, I, I voted and then in the end, you, all, you know, they jump. And I said, well, Pachi, first, I didn't jump. I'm still here and I'm going to continue to be here and I value your vote and I said it's okay, you know, I understand your anger. Your number friend jump, your friend jump. <laughs> yeah. Number two, Admin. I said, oh, he was never my friend. That's oh. why I resigned. Yeah. That's why I resigned, bro. Yeah. Okay. Fine, yeah. yeah, but number two, we are working on the anti-hopping bill and at least we fulfilled that pledge. I think the, the other important bit is also the percentage of turnout. Oh. This whole um, anger, Dissatisfaction, cynicism resulted, of course, people didn't come out to vote. So for me, yes, it's it's a good wake-up call. Every politician, any party, like I said, we are here based on a job contract. You're going to apply and ask, can you please give me another contract next five years? Mm. You have to fulfill a mission. You're not there forever. So it's important to be humble and to learn and to improve. And I think for that Pachi, you know, if you're watching Pachi, um, <laughs> Pachi. Not only the Pachi, la, yeah. I'm, I'm just home. saying yeah. that you know, at the end of the day, it's about the pledges I make, and I yeah. try my best to uh, to fulfill them. So, do you think this situation will get better in the real election um, in future? You know, um, God willing, we can only try our best. We we are doing it through Ayu Malaysia, engaging Pengundi uh, Atas Paga. We're trying to to our ceramas, but also to do our work. Right, effectively as MP and, and uh, at the local constituency level. It's just to say, if you don't vote, mm. then of course the results are, you know, going to be the way it was before. And is that going to change policy? Is that going to change our educational, um, you know, uh, opportunities? Is that going to change even the mm. level of, um, you know, um, the way we look at reforms in the TVET sector or even jobs. So for me, if you, you know, we're trying to also challenge and encourage them. Yeah. Last time, like when we worked for Pakana Harapan or PKI, yes. we have a very clear mission, like we want the changes. True. But right now, True. changes are already made. So what would be the next reason for us to vote for the next election? Oh my God, that change, my darling. <laughs> You're talking about after six decades in power, it's you guys who changed the government. That's a very powerful success. Yeah. And no party, no coalition can say, you know, we can rest on our laurels and be happy. No way. You should be scared mm. because you're supposed to perform. And whether it's Penang, Selangor, Johor, um, Negeri Semila, these are different governments, right? Competing. Yeah. How can I better improve your life? How can I better improve the education system? So show your worth. And that's why competition and that's why voting matters. You can try out, of course, but I don't, you know, of course, for me, I'm not happy with the current government, but right. <laughs> that's up to people to choose. And that's the freedom given in a democracy. Sure. Talking about competitive will make things better. Yeah. Do you think Rafizi will make <laughs> the competition yeah. between Rafizi and. I mean, and, you know, you know. Kaadilan has this very unique. Uh, yeah. Party election, I think it's never been done before in the world. Why? The, Why is it so? It, it's, too, it's too democratic, right? In a sense, right. it allows every member to vote. And yes, as an idea, it's interesting. Mm. A party is also an organization. Imagine yeah. you and Carmen fighting here. Yeah. 
Who's yeah. going to ask me questions? Fire already. Yeah, no, no one's going to ask me questions. You're going to yeah. be fighting. No, my question is more important. So in an organization, balancing the internal contest with the quest to win and campaign for general elections is very important. If the internal contest affects the growth, is problematic. Sure. So I'm glad that elections are over and Rafizi is, uh, you know, assisting the president. They were trying to slowly, through Rapat Nega Rakyat, focus uh, to the to the you know, future. But of course, we we have to reduce the level of internal uh, fighting, which happens and which exists in every party. Yeah. But because we have direct elections, so you see it more like like a, on a microscope, right? Like very clear. <laughs> and because of last time. You well, fight a lot sure. and then yeah. you break That's it. Yeah, yeah, true. Well, it depends also because sometimes it exposes what ideology do you mm. upholding? For uphold. You know, for example, I think the person who jumps, they're answerable for their actions. Of course, you can say certain things have to be improved, you have to put um, anti hopping law, but at the end of the day, that person would have to answer to his or her own conscience. Well, so that's a very important difference mm, sure. because idealism, it doesn't just grow overnight. Yeah. We see ourselves from Generation X, mm. but also Generasi Reformasi because we joined the party as our first political party. We kind of, you know, from imagine from a year old, 18 mm. years old mm. until today. Yeah, so it's been a long, I, I thought I was going to be campaigning for two weeks mm. and then eating some pasta with you, right? But <laughs> um, I realised I'm still in politics and my children, um, you know, have, have grown up as teenagers. But of course, politics is where you make the, the most lasting change. It's the highest political office. Many of the people outside say that because PKR is a multiracial country and that affects the Malay vote. Let's say your, your idea is very great, but they, they don't trust you. Yeah. They won't vote. Traction, yeah. info, uh, yeah. Is that it's true? true. Like, well, you know, we decided back in 1999 uh, to be a multiracial, to be um, focused on social justice and in up, is up very hard, right? It was very difficult because yeah. 1999, I would say, even more. Um, racial-based quality, yep. yeah? even more conscious of our identity. But even in Islam, there's no such thing mm. that differentiates us. Mm. Race is, we're supposed to celebrate our diversity. So for me, it's an important principal position. Of course, when you deal with policy, you try to address. Dr. Lee Ho On is having a talk on, uh, on Monday. He did a paper revisiting the NEP after 50 years. I like the way he approached it, looking at it effectively, whether it's helped different segments. Has it improved, um, like uh, reducing poverty? Yep. How about the others? Has it really actually helped affirmative action? Or, or become, only, then... yes, or only allow the top. Group, um, you know, 1% or 2% or 10% of the particular racial group to be successful. So it's good for us to continue to review these things and it's challenging of course but how do you communicate? Like in the kampung yeah. areas, I try my best yeah but of course you have to take into account the fear lah. Do you, do you strategy. face any challenge when you communicate? Like you say you, you want to review this thing. Yeah, I mean the way you communicate has to be in a way that they can absorb. And change is always about um, management, right? Change management is a strategy in itself. You don't, you know, you, you, you say it's important to be strategic. And we learned, of course, Pakatan Harapan, of course, learned from the 22 months. I, I remember I went to uh, Trunganu, Pantai right. Batu Buru, and it was like thousands of people coming. And my first Chorama, oh my God. And I remember going on the stage and I said, Sai, you're not there, lah, you're very young, yeah. And so I said, uh, terima kasih, saya sangat bahagia dan bersyukur dapat sampai ke Pantai Buruk ini. Oh, <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> Pantai Buruk. So, yeah, then it was Pantai Batu Buruk, right. right? And of course, it was a big um, embarrassment. Right. But you know, I learned from it and then I always memorize the place I'm coming. Like here, Piccadilly Cafe. So, oh, <laughs> wow, very, very good <laughs> advertisement. Yeah. And I take huh? one example at like democracy, right? When you talk about democratic rights, how can people understand when they they don't feel it in their pockets? Yeah. Oh, right? So it's like for even for aid, for support, I first one small thing. I said, you know, we talk about justice in giving assistance. So some uh, voters from MCA I had to go to their kawasan, right? They don't support me. But I said, because I'm a member of parliament, I'm also serving you. 
So this is my concept, what my party teaches me about justice. Stick back action. Yeah, your action, whether it's food aid, um, and of course, you're trying to ask them to join you, but you also placing that you will not be discriminated against because of your political choice. Mm. So this is a start. And then you show how you're talking about fighting corruption. People hear like, all these big, big things, LCS, billions. But how do you translate if there's less corruption, then it helps you as a person. Mm. So this is our challenge. All right. Yeah, that's why I'm here also to learn from Lucas and Carmen. Oh. <laughs> because again, communicate, communication, right? It's a, it's a, it's a two ways thing. Yes, and also like to see what kind of ways people to understand, and perhaps uh, learn a thing or two too um, mm. along the way. We right. mm. yeah, admire Nuriza because from the you are one of the earliest female figure to speak out in politician like previously Malaysia actually all male dominant politicians. Yeah, quite male dominated. Yeah. Mm. So uh, do you feel challenges as your gender? Or? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> especially I, uh, as a mother. Yeah. It was, it was very tough because I, I first campaigned uh, when I just gave birth to Safia. Oh, it was very difficult. Uh, I was still breastfeeding and then we're trying to tell people, you know, you have to make the landscape less male-centric. Mm. You know, maybe more, more friendly to women. And um, so I think it's not just about me, right? Because you want to change the landscape for every woman, for everyone. Uh, so even in parliament, uh, trying to say you have to have a breastfeeding room. But not just that. Respect, you know, uh, no sexist jokes. And I, I did get that beginning, but I, you know, I, will, I will call them out. Lah. That's why, other than mainstreaming um, gender sensitivity, making sure that we all adopt this agenda, we also need um, men as, as, as partners in this effort. And I think that's why um, it's important to teach my son. My sons now, I've got two sons now, mm -hmm. who, you know, mm -hmm. Harith and Yujo both have to respect women. And by the same token, Karen, we can't force everyone to join or, or want a career. I think we have to say that women have the choice. Mm -hmm. You want to be a homemaker, you want to be a career, a driven person, is really sure. that choice has to sure. be accorded to you. And what governments can do is introduce flexible work hour policies, and governments can introduce, uh, you know, quality childcare. Sekarang susah yeah, to get uh, quality <laughs> ones. Yeah. So these things are important because during the pandemic, women are the ones who lose their jobs. Yeah. They are the ones who have it. Take care if, of family. Yeah, they were always going to be number one. Who's going to take mm. care of family? They will not choose the men usually, it's the women. And then when you leave the job, um, the workforce, how do you come back? Sure. That retraining, you got to make it easier lah. and uh, you know more. Um, able to absorb women. Have any words for our audience? Like, <laughs> um, no, just um, thank you to Lucas and Carmen. Really, I um, thank you so much. And Chen Chung, because <laughs> my my colleague. Oh, okay. <laughs> he, mess he messaged me, Isa. You have to come today. Oh, oh, I see. So, okay. Let me need okay. to thank him as well. Thank oh, you. Oh, I, I don't know this yeah. story. Right. No, no, but he's nice. He's nice. Right, he's, okay. He was my treasurer before in our party. Adun in, 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 in Pahang. Yeah. So, um, you know, so he said, why not? And I said, yeah, sure. You know, because I feel that thanks to the both of you as well and the listeners for giving me the space. And I assume this is mine, all of it. Sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. sure. Yeah. You are a later. <laughs> Thank you so much because uh, this is also the first time we interview a PKR leader. Oh, yeah. I see, I yeah. see, I see, I see. This is the first time, right? Yeah, this yeah. is the first time. Our audience so. always wanted to listen from different parties yeah. Yeah, to yeah. understand their As idols. We got too many be. DAP. <laughs> members. No, no, yeah. always yeah. Yeah. Value <laughs> DAP. Okay, okay. We, we are not only DAP. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Oh, you right. don't have MCA? Oh, God, uh, but uh, a few uh, only. Uh, you uh, don't have uh, AMLO yet, AMLO? Yeah. Uh, we try to get. <laughs> We try to get. Where is Shema? Sorry, they only appear on TV. Do you know any? Do you know any? How much space you want to give to them, sorry? Yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> do you know any? Uh, I'm no member. Yeah. Uh, like uh, Kyrie or yeah. what? <laughs> because no, we heard no he right. claimed that you are his friend, right? Uh, Rafizi and you and. Yeah. <laughs> Can you help us to call Gen him? X, Gen X. Gen uh, X. You can write an email to Kementerian to set up <laughs> information. <laughs> alright, alright. That's what I do too. Actually, we write already. We wrote already. Oh, okay. We wrote okay, to you. Yes, also. Okay, okay. <laughs> waiting, still waiting. Minister, ma. Minister, ma. Okay, okay. Very busy. Must have lunch before, Minister, ma. Okay, okay. <laughs> alright. Anyhow, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you.